welcome to the Australia 24-hour news. More than 150 school children have been injured. Possibly four left for dead and it claimed that four schoolgirls have been raped in Bangladesh road safety protest on the 4th of August 2018. <laughs> It was the seventh day of an ongoing protest carried out by school children and students all over Bangladesh. Police and the supporters of Bangladesh's ruling party, Awami League, brutally attacked school children who were peacefully protesting poor road safety and widespread corruption in the transportation industry. For the last week, students have brought cars to the capital, Dhaka, to a standstill after two students were killed and several more injured by a speeding bus. Bangladesh's transport sector is widely seen as corrupt, unregulated and dangerous. And as the news of a teenager student's death spread rapidly on social media, they became a catalyst for an outpouring of anger against the authoritarian and corrupted Awami League government, who has been ruling the country since 2009 without a legitimate and fair election. Reports show that more than 4,200 pedestrians were killed in road accidents in Bangladesh last year alone. Last weekend, the 29th of July, after a speeding bus struck and killed two school children in the capital Dhaka, their peers began to pour into the streets demanding justice. Since then, countrywide, almost all school children were taking to the streets calling for an improvement in road safety in Bangladesh. Their week-long protests were found to be peaceful. However, through Facebook Live exposed serious irregularities among the government officials, including various ministers and police officers. A number of influential ministers and higher-ranking police officers have publicly threatened the protesting school children to stop this protest, amid concerns that the unprecedented teen outrage could turn into widespread anti-government demonstrations. The government has closed all schools in the country on Thursday in an effort to put an end to the protest, but that failed. On the 4th of August, Saturday, police used tear gas and batons to scatter the protesting school children. A Johns Franz Passy AFP reported that more than 100 teenagers were injured in Dhaka streets after police fired rubber bullets into the crowds. Emergency ward doctor Abdes Shabir told AFP that they had treated more than 115 injured school children so far. He added a few of them were in very bad condition. Hospital staff confirmed that some sported injuries consistent with rubber bullets, although the government ministers denied such incidences. Sabir Hassan, a student, said that school children were holding protests peacefully on the road when they were attacked. We were all feeling threatened here. All we wanted was a peaceful protest. We don't want any trouble occurring around here. Yet rubber bullets were shot at children without any provocation. Witnesses said police fired rubber bullets and tear gas at protesting school children and pro-government activists. Chatra League attacked them with sticks, knives, and other illegal arms, leaving many injured and four left for dead. They also told that four school girls were abducted and raped by the Chatra League thugs. Some videos and pictures and social media depict that at one point schoolboys were trying to protect the girls from the Chatra League's brutal attacks by creating a human chain. Bangladesh's leading newspaper, the Daily Start, reported some pro-government activists were brandishing firearms, pistols on school children. Several Facebook live footages also confirmed this. Many protesters mentioned in their Facebook posts that they had to use social media through a VPN and other technical methods. They all alleged that before the attack, the government had restricted Facebook, reduced bandwidth on the internet, 
and warned all media to stay away from covering the news of this attack. One of the television channels, Channel 24, was stopped during their live coverage of the attack. <laughs> Government Sheikh Hassana has ruled Bangladesh since 2009. And over the past decade, she has appeared to become an authoritarian dictator. It's widely alleged that she has clung unto power and shut down opposition voices. And she's been directly responsible for enforcing disappearances of many opposition leaders and activists. Killing opposition leaders by simply giving them a death sentence through fabricated judicial processes. Abducting about a thousand and imprisoning the main opposition leader and former prime minister, Khalida Zia. Human rights organizations, foreign diplomats, and international media have been severely criticizing Sheikh Hassani's rule so far. For over the past 10 years, she has remained almost unchallenged, except for a few uprisings, which were stopped brutally. In recent months, her government has been more shaken than ever by student protests, demanding an end to the decade-old system of discriminatory civil service recruitment and in the past week, she has faced a unique protest from school children. In all cases, she is found to be using her thugs to stop those protests, which has become a general trend of the government of Bangladesh. However, many people question for how long can it continue on just like this. On the 4th of August, Bangladeshi people residing in Australia have given solidarity with the ongoing movement of the students in Bangladesh. <laughs> Protests likely to continue despite the day of violence as thousands of people, mainly parents of school children, university students and general people, took to the street on Sunday morning, the 5th of August. Protesters want justice, a safer Bangladesh, and want to get rid of the corrupt government. Police and Chhatra League again attacked the protesters.